In this video, I'm talking about how your hearing aids reduce background noise. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. By far the biggest concern of individuals with hearing loss is being able to hear and understand speech again in a background noise situation. And because this concern is so large, hearing aid manufacturers spend considerable time and money developing hearing aid technologies to reduce background noise as much as possible. But before I get into how hearing aids actually reduce background noise, it's very important that you understand signal to noise ratio loss, otherwise known as SNR loss. SNR loss is calculated by performing a speech and noise test like the Quicksyn. This is when you're presented with a list of sentences and you have to repeat those sentences back as accurately as possible, but with each sentence increases the background noise. So you're really trying to filter that speech from all the noise, simulating like a noisy restaurant. The scoring of SNR loss is in decibels. It goes from zero decibels up to 26 decibels. The lower the number, the better you hear in a background noise situation. The higher the number, the worse you hear in a background noise situation. Now let me give you some context by giving you a real world example. Let's say that you go into a restaurant and that restaurant has a background noise of 80 decibels. And let's say that you scored on the Quicksyn test a 10 dB SNR loss. What that basically means is that when you have an 80 decibel background noise, you need speech to be 10 decibels louder than that 80 decibels, so 90 decibels, in order for you to be able to understand speech as well as a normal hearing individual. So it stands to reason that if you can reduce your SNR loss score from a 10 down to something lower than a 10, that you should be able to understand speech better in a background noise situation. And there are several ways to accomplish this. You could simply just reduce the distance between you and the person that you're talking to in that background noise environment. This way, the amplitude of their voice increases for you, which can help you do a better job of separating out their voice from the background noise. You could have your hearing aids programmed using real ear measurement to verify that your hearing aids have been programmed appropriately to your hearing loss prescription. There have been studies that have been published that show that when you have real ear measurement performed on your hearing aids, that it significantly reduces your SNR loss score. You should always be making sure that you can see the mouth of the person that you're talking to because you obtain visual cues of speech information that can help you fill in the gaps of what you're not hearing. And you could wear hearing aids that use digital features to help reduce the negative impact of background noise. Hearing aids manage background noise in two different ways. The first way is to use directional microphones. Directional microphones allow a hearing aid to pick up sound and amplify sound from a very specific direction. So imagine that you're in a noisy restaurant and you're sitting across the table from a person that you want to hear. Well, you have a bunch of noise in there, so you don't want to amplify everything. You only want to try to amplify the person that you're talking to. So those directional microphones focus on that person's voice, amplify their voice without trying to amplify those other sounds that are around you. Since directional microphones were developed, this technology has significantly improved to the point now where you don't really have to switch into a very specific program to utilize them. Usually the acoustic environments will tell a hearing aid to switch over into this directional microphone program in order to give you hands-free better hearing in these noisy environments. These directional microphones typically improve your signal to noise ratio loss by about three to six decibels, which might not seem like a lot, but that is actually a really big deal when you're in a noisy the environment and every little bit helps. So let's imagine again that you have a 10 dB SNR loss. Imagine if you could reduce that by six decibels to get you down to a four. Now just for some context here, the range between zero and three is technically normal. So if you get yourself all the way from a 10 to a four, that is a significant improvement in your ability to understand speech in a noisy environment. Now the second hearing aid feature is digital noise reduction. This is when a hearing aid identifies that you're in a noisy environment and tries to allocate less amplification to that background noise while trying to preserve speech information in that same environment. To understand this, we need to discuss the frequency response of noise versus the frequency response of speech. Noise tends to be steady state. Think of when you turn on a fan. That fan stays at the same steady level of intensity the entire time that it's on. 
If you were to measure the frequency response of this fan noise, you would see a relatively flat response like you see in this image on the left hand side of the screen. However, the frequency response of human speech is much more variable and has many more pauses and fluctuations and inflections like you see illustrated here on the right hand side of your screen. This is how a hearing aid can determine which channels it wants to reduce because they have background noise in them and which channels it wants to preserve because they contain speech information. Now I know that I just introduced a new term here called channel, so let me see if I can simply explain what a channel is. Anytime that a sound comes into a hearing aid, that sound needs to be processed. And that sound would be broken up into little chunks across the frequency spectrum of that sound. So think of like a piano keyboard and every key being one of those channels. So when those sounds come in, let's just say that you have a hearing aid with 20 channels. You would have 20 little buckets that that sound would be categorized into when it comes into the hearing aid. Now let's say that that signal that came in has noise in a few of those channels and it has speech in a few of those channels. So what the hearing aid would want to do with that with digital noise reduction is to remove or reduce the amount of amplification given to those little buckets or channels that has only noise in it. This way you can effectively reduce the noise and still leave the speech information available for the hearing aid wearer to hear and understand. Now we have the ability to measure how much digital noise reduction a hearing aid can actually accomplish. And we can do this in one of two ways. We can either use probe microphone measurement equipment, the same equipment that we would use to perform real ear measurement, or we can use a hearing instrument test box to have a little controlled environment to run a few experiments on to see how much reduction of background noise that hearing aid is capable of. When we use a test box to measure noise reduction, we play a steady state noise like speech babble or speech weighted pink noise, and we see how much reduction the device provides. As you can see, it takes a few seconds for noise reduction to activate, and when it does, you can see the reduction in amplification given to that particular noise, and it gives you a measure of how much noise reduction occurred in decibels. The amount of noise reduction can be manipulated in almost every name brand hearing aid. Now it's important to understand that just because you're getting noise reduction here, it does not mean that you're improving signal to noise ratio loss. And it also does not mean that more noise reduction is always better. You can get into situations where you can have too much background noise reduction or digital noise reduction, and you can get into situations where you can have too little. In fact, most research studies suggest that digital noise reduction algorithms simply improve listening comfort and perceived sound quality. They do not necessarily improve speech intelligibility or signal to noise ratio loss. So you might be asking yourself, if you're not going to achieve better speech intelligibility or reduce your signal to noise ratio loss score, then does digital noise reduction even make any sense to use? And the answer to that is maybe, because it depends on how much auditory comfort you're looking for in that particular situation. This is why it's so important to have open dialogue with your hearing care professional so they can identify how much noise reduction makes sense for you. Now after you've maximized your performance in background noise with whatever hearing aids that you have, if you're still not performing at the level that you want to perform in in a noisy environment, then you are left with no other option than to use an assistive listening device like a remote microphone. A remote microphone will significantly improve your ability to hear and understand speech in a background noise environment, and you will get more signal to noise ratio loss improvement from a remote microphone than you will with even the best hearing aid in the world programmed perfectly. All right, at this point, hopefully you have a better understanding of how hearing aids are actually trying to remove background noise for you so you can ultimately hear better. All I can say is that I highly recommend that you consult with your hearing care professional to ensure that all of the settings inside of the programming software for your hearing aids have been optimized so you can hear your best in background noise. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.